In this week's video, we'll review the latest charts that clearly show escalating trade tensions are pushing bear market odds much higher. We've got a lot to cover this week, so we'll be moving very, very quickly. Just keep in mind how the law of supply and the law of demand impact markets and also the common sense concept of self-preservation. You may remember over the past few months, we've used the concept that if you want to know what the weather is like, look out the window. You can do the same thing trying to figure out how effective Fed policy may or may not be. As we've described in the past, at some point, the economic data and fundamental problems of the day reach a tipping point where Fed policy is no longer effective. Here's an example from June of this year where the Fed signaled that interest rate cuts were likely. Market reacted in a very positive manner, telling us that we were over here in June of this year. And we know from past videos that typically when the Fed cuts rates, starts a new rate cutting cycle, and we're not in a recession when that first cut occurs, that typically really good things happen from a historical perspective in the S&P 500. For example, in these cases, the average gain 30 days out, roughly 5%, 60 days out, almost 7%. Thus, if Fed policy is still effective, and we're not in a recession, we would expect good things to be happening. In last week's video, Game Theory told us that the odds were extremely high that the Fed was going to become more market friendly or dovish this week. While the Fed has had several missteps since October of last year, what happened on Friday really was not related to the Fed. Jerome Powell's speech probably checked every single box that the market wanted Mr. Powell to check. And when we take a look out the window, we find that thus far, we're really not following the bullish historical script. This is the first rate cut in a new cycle here. History says good things should be happening and good things happen when Fed policy is still effective. Well, good things aren't happening. Here's the rate cut. Intraday high in the day of the rate cut was 3017. After Powell stopped speaking on Friday, we were hovering somewhere between 2920 and 2930. And after Powell's speech, all three major indices were green on Friday around 11 a.m. And then just before 11 a.m., everything changed when President Trump responded to China's announcement that they were adding new tariffs. And that announcement was made Friday morning. Market was green prior to the first tweet. We ended up down 2.59% for the session. See this trend line here. It looked like we were gonna break below it intraday, but we held. Not the case today, we closed below it. When we look out the window and we see this, it's telling us we very well may be here, or we might even be here, where the fundamental concerns of the day are so great that the Fed is going to be ineffective. That's to be determined, but we can't argue with these facts that we have in front of us as of the close on Friday. And it's possible you may have seen or thought yourself that technical analysis in this approach can't be effective when the president is tweeting. Well, if you really think about it, the president's tweets really aren't any different than any other unexpected event that markets have had to deal with over the past 30 years. Twitter is simply a delivery system. Years ago, they probably would have called a press conference or they would have had a press release. It still would have caught market participants off guard. And in every single historical case, 100% of the unexpected events were reflected in the charts, just as they were reflected in the charts before today's close. Under our approach, and as we've noted numerous times in recent weeks, we're not using charts to predict the future. We're using them to monitor 
and adjust and assess probabilities. The probabilities at roughly 11 a.m. Eastern time and the facts that we had in hand were quite a bit more favorable relative to the close. Human beings have a tendency to freeze when we get a bird strike type event and think it's too late to take action. Is it too late to take action? Was it too late to take some action today? At today's intraday high, just before 11 a.m. Eastern time, the S&P 500 was only 3.27% below this all-time high. Let's think about that from a devastating bear market perspective. Dot-com bust. 49% loss peaked to trough on a closing basis. Financial crisis, 56% plus on a closing basis. How does this look on these charts? Was it too late? This is where you're roughly 3% below the all-time high here. Could have drawn it in here too. And this is where you're 3% below the all-time high. Obviously, if you did some selling on this day, you would have been thrilled. And if you made incremental moves in here over the next few months, you would have been thrilled. If you did some selling right here and then made some incremental moves over the next few days or weeks, you would have been thrilled. Putting what happened today into the proper context from a risk management perspective based on our long-term time frame. The S&P 500 printed a new all-time high three to four weeks ago. How bad can it be? One of the reasons why we did some selling intraday on Friday is because the president said, I will be responding to China's tariffs this afternoon, which basically said the odds favored more pain coming either on Friday or at the open on Monday. And for clients, as we cover charts this week, you should get a much better understanding for the rationale behind our current allocation as of Friday's close. Today was an excellent example of a bird strike incident from a psychological and emotional perspective. Everything looked fine for the week and during the session on Friday around 11 a.m. From a game theory perspective, we pretty much hit a grand slam on expectations relative to the Fed. There's a lot about that topic in our Twitter feed. This issue today kind of came out of left field. Why? Because the last thing the United States did was basically friendly. We pushed out our tariffs to December. Really weren't expecting China to ratchet things up after the U.S.'s last move. It's not shocking, but it didn't fit the profile of what we had seen thus far. And you may remember the concept of not seeing what we were expecting to see and not following the historical script. And understanding history helps us understand whether we're on script or potentially drifting from the script. Before Friday's session, we were kind of in technical no man's land, still may be there, but we had seen some things that we covered on August 2nd that said, we should keep an open mind about worse than expected outcomes. And even heading into today, it might not feel that way. We were still net sellers of stocks as of the close on Friday, August 2nd. Heading into today's session, we had more cash than we had on August 2nd. We had a higher allocation to bonds heading into today's session, and we had a higher allocation to precious metals incrementally. Let's look at some other charts and overlay these concepts. From August 2nd, told us to keep an open mind. This is what we were looking for. 2016-like move on this chart here of diversified bonds relative to intermediate U.S. Treasury bonds. This really doesn't look like this. On August 2nd, we were below this trend line. You could have made an argument this might have been a false breakdown. If we fast forward to the close on Friday, August 23rd, this is what we want to see here. This is the 2016 case. This really doesn't look anything like that. It speaks to probabilities. This 
really doesn't look anything like this. It speaks to probabilities. Understanding history relative to rare and extreme moves in sentiment is also important. Sometimes when sentiment gets overextended, it can be near a bottom. Sometimes when bonds are extremely overbought, that can be at a point when bonds are about to sell off and stocks are about to rally. However, we can also see very, very similar things at the early stages of a downtrend. Sentiment near these bottoms is very, very similar to the early stages of a longer term downtrend in here in calendar year 2008. There are ways to discern between something that might look like a low and something that might look like the early stages of a new downtrend. And we'll cover a few of them in this week's video. It's a nice segue. Here's one example. This is bonds versus stocks monthly. This is the beginning of the dot-com bust. This is the S&P 500. You can see there's a long-term downtrend here. This favors stocks over bonds. This is a bullish breakout for bonds that occurs late in the year 2000. If you know your market history, this bear market starts to accelerate around September of the year 2000. So if we own stocks, we don't want to see this ratios monthly chart have the Bollinger Band turn up like this. We don't want to see a bullish breakout from this downtrend. We don't want to see positive MACD looks like this or this. And we prefer not to see something extended above the Bollinger Band at the early stages of a new trend. That can be bullish, not bearish. Notice here, you get somewhat of a breakout look in 1995, but you never get a bullish MACD cross. This looks different from this. How does the same chart look today? The answer is it's starting to look concerning, which tells us it's possible the present day might be more like this period here than these major bottoms. That's to be determined. But with a look like this, with this Bollinger Band turning up and MACD looking like this, we just checked a lot of the boxes here that we just said we didn't want to see in the present day. This is something in the 1995 case that is not similar to the present day. Present day looks worse than this. How does this compare to the financial crisis? Very, very similar situation. Downtrend, resistance, resistance, bullish breakout. Monthly center line starts to turn up. We get the look here above the upper Bollinger Band at the early stages of a new secular trend here. MACD here in 2005 never really gets a good looking bullish cross. It's very indecisive. This is a lot more decisive in favor of bonds. These are the types of things that we don't want to see. The month is not over yet and that is key. But right now we have some of those looks forming and that's concerning. Since the month is not over, we can look at a weekly version of this chart and see if we can learn anything. Same concepts here. This is long-term treasury bonds relative to the S&P 500. Resistance, resistance, downtrend, resistance. Couldn't clear it here. This is Thursday of this week. On Thursday of this week, it's very, very hard to say that this looks discernibly different from this look here or this look here. And on Thursday of this week, long-term treasuries, think TLT, were underperforming SPY for the week, Monday through Thursday, by almost 3%. This is a try to be patient with your stocks look and don't add to your bonds yet look. How does this exact same chart look at the end of the week? Quite a bit different. Now we've got 1.23% in favor of bonds. That's a big, big shift in one session. We get a weekly close above the downward sloping trend line, telling us from a probability perspective 
that we have to respect that this monthly breakout could hold into month end. That's to be determined, but the look of this chart is concerning. And that's a big shift. That's negative 2.94 on the weekly on Thursday. Look at this look here. Here's the exact same chart one day later. Why is this a be patient look? Let's go back to the monthly charts. Here's our downward sloping trend line. If we jump the gun here before the breakout and loaded up on bonds and dumped our stocks, it would have been the exact wrong thing to do. S&P 500 on the bottom. If we would have jumped the gun in this case and not waited for this breakout here, it would have been the wrong thing to do. If we loaded up on bonds here and sold all of our stocks over the next few months, it would have been the wrong thing to do. Thus, from a probability perspective on Thursday, it's prudent to try to be patient to see what happens. Why did we make some moves? Because this is what happened on Friday. This is starting to look different from this, 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 and this. And it's starting to look a lot more like this case on the weekly chart. This is the monthly version. Could this chart close back below this line at the end of the month? Absolutely, positively, yes. And that's why we're taking incremental steps. Could this be a false bullish breakout in favor of bonds? Absolutely, positively, yes. There were some false looking breakouts in 1995. That's why we're taking incremental steps. Here's another chart that says it's not yet time to overreact. Incremental moves make sense. It's the monthly chart, TLT versus SPY as of the close on Friday, August 23rd. Resistance, resistance, resistance. We're in the same area now. If we overreacted here, here, and here, that would have been the exact wrong thing to do. Bonds got killed by stocks. Bonds underperformed. Bonds got killed. Stocks did extremely well on the bottom. Stocks did extremely well on the bottom. Stocks did extremely well on the bottom. It can be difficult to discern between these cases and these cases. And a chart like this and a shift like this from Thursday to Friday tells us that the odds are increasing that all of this data that we're seeing could be a case like this. It just speaks to odds, not a certainty. Why we're making incremental shifts and taking it day by day. This version of the chart tells us that we should still have somewhat of a skeptical bent. Not this version. This is SPY versus TLT daily as of the close on Friday, August 23rd. Here is Thursday. Thursday has a good look. Thursday close looks like this. Thursday close looks like this area in here. Friday close does not. It's also concerning that we're down below this downward sloping trend line here. This is the look that we want in the present day. This is the look we want. Ratio above a center line that's turning up. Ratio above a center line that's turning up. Ratio that's below a center line that's clearly pointing down. I'm going to show you Friday's version of this chart next. This is SPY TLT weekly that we covered, I think, for the first time two or three weeks ago. So this is stocks versus bonds. This is a still try to be patient look on Thursday, August 22nd. SPY on Thursday beating TLT by 3% for the week. Fast forward to Friday's close. SPY underperforming TLT for the week, the full week, which is more important by 1.27%. The ratio held here. The stock market on the bottom held in the same area. If we take this trend line up here, we did not hold in the present day. What once was resistance may now act as support, may now act as support, may now act as support. If we extend this line over, we just close below it between Thursday and Friday. This line, if we extend it here, this is a low, this is a low, we're below that. 
we had three areas of potential support on the weekly chart telling us here patience was rewarded the stock market did well here patience was rewarded stock market did well here patience was rewarded stock market did well this is starting to look like patience will not be rewarded hence we made some moves this could be a false breakdown but we can see this now it doesn't become a false breakdown until something changes if we continue to move in this direction we'll continue to make incremental changes this is still somewhat of a 50 50 look Think about your current allocation if you're a client and this look here. Think about our allocation as of Thursday's close and think about the look of this chart as of Thursday's close, which looks quite a bit different than Friday's close. Let's look at the chart list that was created on Sunday, August 4th to help us answer these questions. If you need to pause your video player, you can do so. This is market breath. Breath holds here, the S&P 500 holds. Breath holds, S&P 500 holds. This is what we look like on August 15th, telling us to try to remain open-minded about a look like this. This is what we looked like on Thursday night, still telling us this look here could be similar to this look here and this look here. In this case, stocks rallied. In this case, stocks rallied. If we fast forward, to the close on Friday, August 23rd. We're looking for small differences. When it holds here, it moves away quickly. Moves away quickly, moves away quickly, moves away quickly. Moves away sharply and quickly. Moves away sharply and quickly. We're looking for small differences in behavior small differences in the net aggregate opinion of all market participants about all subjects on all time frames this is a small change but this doesn't look as confident as this or this we're still above the line and if we look at our allocation it accounts for that because we could still move in this direction and this could still happen similar situation breath august 15th everything we just said is true about this green line still above it this is the same chart as of the close on friday august 23rd these are small differences when we hold here we go above the center line that's rising when we hold here where the s p 500 holds we go above a center line that's turning back up it's not what we have today at all this doesn't look anything like this and this doesn't look anything like this we're still above the green line our allocations account for that. Our allocations also account for the fact that this doesn't look anything like this, and this doesn't look anything like this. Hence, diversification. We can still move this way, or we can still move this way, incrementally. S&P 500% of stocks above the 200-day exponential moving average. We covered this chart on August 15th, same exact concepts. Indicator for breath holds in 2016, good things happen, holds, good things happen, holds, good things happen in the stock market. This is S&P 500 on the bottom. Recently held, good things happened. Here's Thursday evening. This doesn't look too bad. Looks like we're bouncing here. Looks like we're moving in the right direction. This is Friday. Again, we're looking for very small discernible differences. Market holds here. Look at this sharp move sharp move away sharp move away this is not a sharp move away the probability of something bad happening is higher here than it was here here or here we're still above the green line our allocation accounts for that we'll learn something either way it's possible this is going to morph into something like this where really bad things happened in the stock market it's possible this is going to bounce like this. Same exact concepts, NASDAQ breath indicator, August 15th, August 22nd, Thursday. This looks pretty good. There's no reason to panic going into Jackson Hole and Powell. There's still no reason to panic, but this still isn't the sharp move that we're looking for. A sharp move, a confident move, confident. This is indecisive and this is occurring 
had a very, very dicey area for the S&P 500. We have multiple failed breakouts here. Bird strike work tells us anything that you can think of technically right here and right here mathematically may seem the same as over here. It's riskier over here, especially if the breakouts fail. That's what bird strike accounts for. The math may look the same here and look the same here. The risks are much higher here if we get a failed breakout than they were here. To highlight the discernible and concerning difference now, this doesn't really look like this, 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 or this. This speaks to bullish conviction. This speaks to indecisiveness. And it's indecisiveness at a very, very shaky area on the S&P 500. Still above the blue line. Our allocation accounts for that. Bird strike research studying every single trading day, S&P 500 dating back to 1950. It is possible that something like this could morph into something like this, which occurred in 1957. Not a forecast, just an illustrative example of what can happen with multiple failed breakouts. Not gonna spend a lot of time on a yield curve. It is still not inverted on a closing basis. If you wanna pause your video player, this is from the RPI graduate engineering school that identified that the yield curve was helpful from a forecasting and probability perspective. And he says 22 months. Again, you can read it on your own. Why do we add to our gold positions on Friday? This looks better than this. This looks better than all of this. Gold at the end of the week beat SPY by 2.39%. Unbelievably, Thursday, the end of the day it was just the opposite. Gold was underperforming SPY by 2.16%. This is a huge move and shift. What does the huge move and shift tell us in one session? It tells us that this fundamental issue, trade, may have pushed us to this side of this curve. Over here, you wanna err on the side of being a bull. Over here, you want to err on the side of being a bear. Probably somewhere either here, here, or here. No question we have more evidence potentially being here than we had just a few weeks ago. Simply speaks to odds. All right, this is physical gold, dollar sign GLD versus the S&P 500 index monthly going back to 1969-ish, 1970-ish. We have to make sure that this move above a downward sloping 50 month moving average isn't similar to this head fake near the 1987 crash. If we overreacted to a look like this in 1987, that would have been a big, big mistake as far as the stock market goes here. From a bullish perspective, it's not the end of the month yet, but this is the first time since gold started to underperform significantly roughly in 2012 that we have a chance to get a monthly close above the 50 month moving average this look here could be similar to this look here where really bad things continue to happen in the stock market and gold absolutely annihilated stocks for a very long period of time we have enough evidence here and even enough evidence here to warrant adding to our gold positions as we did on Friday. The more it looks like this and the more confident this breakout becomes, the easier it is to continue to add and add in much bigger chunks if all of this holds. Why? Because it's possible this look here is this look here. And this is why we have to consider having gold in our portfolio. I remember I said earlier that bird strike tells us that a mathematical profile here that might have the exact same numbers. So let's say you have a mathematical profile and your number is 90. A 90 right here is not the same as getting a 90 here. This is the chart as of Thursday, S&P 500. 
a lot of potentially concerning things on this chart. So much so that when I saw this chart on Thursday evening, we put this friendly little reminder, retweeted this tweet here on our Twitter feed before Powell's speech. There are some small discernible changes here. We come up here, we come to this moving average cluster, we blow right through it. We come back to the moving average cluster, the little rainbow looking thing here. This is a short stay below, and this is institutional buying support. This here and this here really doesn't look anything like this indecisive look here in a very, very important place. Why is it important? This is a trend line here. We came back up to that trend line. What once acted as support, what once acted as support may now act as resistance. This is a prove it to me area in here. And on Thursday evening, experience and pattern recognition told us that it's not shocking that we lost 2.59%. There are still some good things on this chart. What are they? Well, we're still above an upward sloping 200 day moving average. We've still got this trend channel here where we could have some potential support, but this doesn't look that great from a risk reward perspective. And this could morph into something like this, this, or this. Not a, not a prediction. Could also morph into something that goes like this. Our allocations reflect that. Our allocations reflect that we're still above the 200 day. Not too many bad things can happen above the 200 day. Below the 200 day, it gets much, much easier to run away from risk and reallocate at a faster rate. That's not where we are. We're still holding near this area that we've shown numerous times, I believe since Monday, August 5th. If we draw a line from here to here, it's logical that we could even get a bounce next week from this level. You could also see something like this next week. And again, our allocations reflect that very, very mixed probability look here in this trend channel here, this could be support at 2,800. These were the levels that we put out a few weeks ago. This is the close on Friday, August 23rd. This type of look does not warrant dumping all of our stocks. It warrants a more mixed allocation. This is also another look close August 23rd weekly chart. This says, Reducing some risk is prudent. Holding on to some of our risk assets at this point is also prudent. 30 week moving average. This looks a little bit worse now. We have a close below. You can make an argument it's similar to this, but the stay below here is much shorter. We now have three bars below the 30 week moving average. We don't have three bars below here. We don't have three bars below here. This really is starting to look more like this or this. We'd much rather have this look like this or this. Still not too bad, but more concerning. Industrial production fundamentals got a bad number this week. Not gonna go into a lot of detail here. This is industrial production. This is the year 2000, 2007. This is around the volatility 2015, 2016. We're back near this center line. This is a concerning look, which speaks to probabilities. President Trump did respond to China after the close on Friday, which means the market has additional tariffs and additional escalation to deal with next week. How will the market react to that? That's to be determined. But based on everything that we've covered in this week's video, and we could cover a lot, lot more, we just don't have time. We feel very, very comfortable with the moves that we made on Friday and the rationale relative to the differences between our allocation on Thursday evening and on Friday evening. This is a dicier, more mixed look. Our allocation reflects that. This is a be patient look. This is a still try to be patient look. We can also see this shift in terms of this breakdown and this line acting as resistance on this stock versus bonds chart. 
This is the look we're looking for, stock market bottoms. This is the look we're looking for, stock market bottoms. This is what we're looking for. This is what we're looking for. This is what we have today. This looks different relative to this and this. We've accounted for that. S&P 500 relative to the VIX Thursday's close. This look here still gives us hope for a look like this or this. RSI trying to clear 50 here. Rate of change on Thursday. This is a good look here. Fast forward to Friday. Now we're below a downward sloping center line. RSI now looks like it's been rejected at 50. And instead of having rate of change above zero, we just gave it up. As we've mentioned numerous times in recent weeks, potential support here on the weekly chart, potential support here. That's why we reduced our growth exposure and didn't come close to eliminating it. We'll learn something either way in these areas. S&P 500 daily, a lot going on here. This is the look we want. 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 Above center line, above center line. Can't clear the center line. Above the green line, above the green line. Having trouble clearing the same green line. RSI looks like it's having trouble clearing 50. That looks a lot different than this where good things happened in the stock market. A lot different than this, December, January, where good things happened in the stock market. Rate of change above zero. Rate of change above zero near the June low. Rate of change gave up zero on Friday. Over the next few weeks, we'll manage in the exact same manner. Not making any assumptions about what happens next. Not trying to make the bearish case in this week's video. Not trying to make the bullish case. Making the case for what we have right now, which are mixed probabilities. Mixed probabilities that warrant a mixed allocation. Which way that allocation migrates is 100% dependent on what the market decides to do or not do. And as we noted late on Thursday night, really early Friday morning after midnight on Twitter, the only way all of this works is if we don't make any assumptions about what the market's going to do or not do. And if we see how it unfolds and see how the data evolves, which means we have to head into next week and every week with that flexible, unbiased, an open mind. It may also be worth a visit to the new website to see the FAQs. We've got new and expanded FAQs covering traditional investing, low cost passive investing, and the online slash robo strategies that are currently in vogue. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or offer to buy or sell any security or any related financial instruments, nor should any of the content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management, LLC, or CCM is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.